You 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 think we're good? Can everybody hear me? Okay. We're going to get started. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. My name is Ted Signorovich, and it's my pleasure today to honor the work of Mike Camby. This time last year, hole three was a par four. We used to play from that tee box back there. And many, many members, many rounds, would look back this way and look at this farmland here and say, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great we could make a par five? And everybody would look at each other and laugh and go, nah, it never happened. Not at WCC. And we look back and it happened. Okay? Wouldn't it be great if we could make this into a par five? Today, we want to recognize the hard work of Mike's, along with the gracious gesture of Margaret Kirker, who turned many members' dreams into a reality. So thank you. Hole three now is a par five. It's playing over 500 yards. Used to be a par four, played 390 to 400 yards. We went from an executive course to a regular golf course with a par 18, par 70. Okay, first a few introductions. First I want to introduce Margaret Coker. Say hello, thank you. The Hamby family, Sandy Hamby. Daughter, Brooke Husky, Hus husband David, grandson Lewis. <laughs> Son, Matthew, daughter-in-law, Courtney. Grandsons, Ben, Connor, Oliver, and Dexton. Dexton. Okay. Son Scott Seidel. Son Jeff, grandchildren Morgan, Connor, and Edison. Couldn't make it today. Okay. Now I also want to introduce um, Kip Kevero. He's our general manager. And last but not least, our president, Wes Hefkin, who's going to get up and um, give a little talk. As Ted previously said, mentioned, the expansion of this whole three had been discussed by many boards probably for the last 25 years or better. Uh, over the past couple years, it seems like it was becoming more and more of a discussion, and Rich Maui, who was president of the board at the time, had decided that we were going to make this happen, and after numerous attempts, he felt like uh, there was sort of a stalemate on acquiring the property. So at a board meeting one time, he'd given us an update, and he said, look, it, it seems like we're kind of stalled out. And Mike mentioned, you know, I know Margaret Coker. She owns that property. Uh, let me see what I can do. So Mike, being Mike, decided to uh, engage Margaret with some conversations. And it seemed like things were going pretty good. And in the midst of all that, Mike was diagnosed with cancer. So Mike came to what was probably our last board meeting. And he said, look, this is going to happen. It's going to be the last gift I give to the country club. And he made it happen. And that's why we're here today. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it, it was Mike's determination that got us here. Um, Margaret, I do want to thank you for working with the club. Um, I, I know it was a long time coming. Thank you. And what's interesting is uh, Margaret met Kip, and before it was over with, he'd signed her up as a social member. So Margaret's now a social member of the club. <laughs> um, I also want to, uh, to thank Mike. Uh, if it hadn't been for his determination to turn this dream into reality, I, I just don't know, I, I don't think it would have happened. Um, I'm sure Mike is up above smiling down on us today, and I'm sure every time somebody steps up to these tee boxes, he's probably up there thinking, hit it long, hit it hard. Uh, to the Hamby family, thanks for sharing Mike with us. Uh, we do miss his insight, his smile, and his laughter. And real quick in closing, I just want to let you know, uh, anybody who knew Mike knew that he loved his Manhattans. But what you probably didn't know is that Kip, our general manager, 
made a special Manhattan for Mike one day and he fell in love with it. Um, so, in keeping with the spirit, just like we have the Lure Burger to recognize all the efforts by the Lure family, starting today in the clubhouse, we are going to be offering the Hamby Manhattan. Uh, I, I will tell you, there's only two people or two names who have something on the menu. We have the Lure Burger, now we'll have the Hamby Manhattan. And, and you know what, that, that, the Hamby Manhattan is just to remember the great, the great guy Mike was. Thanks, Mike. You all don't stop amazing me by showing up out here on a lovely, lovely Saturday afternoon, honoring this event and honoring Mike. You know, it's people like us that make the WCC so great. If there's an event, no matter what it is, except maybe for cleanup day, which is next Saturday, <laughs> uh, June 18th, <laughs> starting what, at eight o'clock? Okay. But other events are always attended very well. <laughs> but it's what makes the WCC, and that's what Mike always said, it's the people that are out here that make it. You all pitch in, and he always appreciated that. When he retired, he said, there's one thing I want to do. I want to be on the board at the country club. He said, I feel like now that I'm retired, I'll have the time to donate what is needed to get things done. And some of you that knew Mike better than others, if he set his mind to doing something, he got it done. Used to drive me crazy. He was a Libra and he, that's the scale. And he would weigh out things all the time, constantly. And I'm a Scorpio, I just go with it, you know. <laughs> uh, when Huffy asked him to ask the board about getting new carts for the club. They put their heads together and the board said, well, let's, you know, sell the old ones. That'll be more revenue coming in. We'll get the new ones. And I believe it was the year after or the following year, there were carts that were added to the new fleet already. That was something that Mike thought the club needed. And again, he followed through. And then number three, Wes and Ted covered pretty well how that all came down. During Mike's illness, several, several of you sent pictures or videos of what was going on right here with number three. Scott worked out here at the time, so we got a daily update from him. But you don't know how much he appreciated that. The one thing he wished is that he could have seen it in person. We did spread his ashes out here. That was one of his last requests. He said, you know where I want my ashes. Well, they're out here. We had them in a Jack Daniels bottle. <laughs> and we sprinkled them all over. <laughs> so I, like Wes said too, I hope he's looking down today and just smiling. He had that, well, he had a grin that I always called something else. It started with the S, you know. <laughs> and uh, I knew he was up to something whenever he had that grin. Uh, Gary Rosenbach, H.C. Abbott, Mike Goal, Steve McKinley, and Ted Signorovich poured the slab here for the glider to fit on. I wanted to thank them for that. And also to John Daniel, Scott Seedley, Jen, who is John's daughter, and let's see, Mutt, and, and who am I forgetting? Novak. They've taken such special care of the third T to make it look like it is already. And I want to thank them for the hard work that they went through. Emmett selected a tree here that we wanted planted. He said it'll give us, give us really good shade. Uh, and well, we probably need a couple years for it to come through. <laughs> And then getting back to all of you, Mike loved people. Uh, he was a people person. That's where he was happy, to be around people. And you know, when somebody passes away, the family gets the condolences, 
the cards, the meals, and we so much appreciated that. But all of you that were good friends with Mike, I'm giving you my sympathy and our family's sympathy because you also lost a good friend and a good person. And let's enjoy today and celebrate Mike. Thank you. Yeah, thank everybody for coming out today. I really appreciate it. Today we're in celebration of Mike Hammy. His legacy to the members of WCC is the beauty from this view that surrounds us on this hole today. Thank you, Mike. Golf for me is not the same without Mike and Mike Hart. But I feel his presence today and I know how happy he is. As we raise our glasses in the memory of Mike, let's take a moment of silence to remember him and take what he helped create here today. Thank you. To Mike. To Mike. <laughs> Don't drink that, Sandy. Don't do it. <laughs> Next, um, we're going to have we're going to have a ceremonial tee shot. So, S Sandy, who do you have doing the tee shot? Arnold Palmer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have Matthew and Scott. Matthew and Scott, get up on the tee box and yeah. <laughs> Do you have a tea? Right up there. Yes. Yes. You got a tea, Scott? Yes, I do. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> oh boy, body out here. My buddy Will, my best friend from high school, worked down in Florida at in Ocala. Had a call for it. Pretty much got John Benio's job. And I talked to him a lot about the way people golf, with their habits and that. But, uh, I asked my phone, I said, everybody practice shot at their best one. <laughs> so I'm just gonna get the dark thing. All right. No pressure. I know, right? Right. Scott say some words. Uh, I need to say words. Uh, I didn't anticipate it. So Dad was good at making jokes. I'm good at making excuses. So if this goes in the water, I'm going to take a breakfast. Mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> Mulligan. Yeah, there you go. Before we adjourn to the clubhouse for Manhattan, I want to all, I want to thank all involved for making this par five happen. Margaret Coker, Dave Baxmeyer, Emmett Rustenberg, John Benio and crew, Jim Mendel, and Mike and Sandy Hamby. Thank you all.